Hey everybody, Mark over here at Twanger's Turntable. I hope this all finds you well, or this finds you all well. Hope this all finds you well is another way of saying it, I suppose. Uh, it's been a while, um, a few minutes at least, since I've done a, a video of, uh, of this variety, at least. I've been doing some of the shorts. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you'll find something you'll enjoy. Uh, you'll dig it and stick around. And if you're returning, um, thank you for, for coming back and and uh, and supporting my channel as I as I uh, encourage others to do and and try to uh, um, keep that standard myself and supporting others in the VC and YouTube in general. Here's everybody. So today I'm doing a video that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, and it's it's in relation to the the method that I purchase my vinyl by and large. I, I do most of my purchases. Um, I don't even know if it's most, but at least half of my purchases I've done through Amazon, almost exclusively when I'm purchasing online. I have done a few discogs, um, but typically those are arrangements I've made as local pickups. I've only received a couple through the mail. And in one instance, that didn't go very well. Um, so I've kind of avoided doing that just uh, to avoid the hassles and I won't elaborate on that. It just just didn't work um, as I hoped. Um, so yeah, Amazon by and large, I purchase my vinyl through Amazon um, and have them delivered to me. And I have to say off the top, my experience in that regard has been a, I would I would give it nine out of ten. I, I've rarely had an issue with it. Um, and then the other method I've purchased records is, um, you know, through some of the mom and pop stores, uh, uh, even some antique stores I've stopped in and they sometimes have a record selection. And uh, some of them are maybe in, in less than stellar condition, but I find at least the outer jackets and the sleeves and stuff, maybe not so great. But when I bring them home, I give them a good cleaning. They sound fine. For the most part, um, I don't have an audiophile type rig, as you can see. I've got an old, an old uh, turntable with a relatively inexpensive cartridge, so I, I, I enjoy listening to to music on vinyl. Uh, and no, I'm not trying to promote that particular establishment. Um, although, in my experience, again, music on vinyl, many of the pressings I've I've purchased of theirs have been fine. Uh, but this is not to single anybody out. It's just uh, to elaborate on my experience with Amazon. And I had made, uh, I, I've alluded to that in some of my past videos of, of a certain experience I had with Amazon that kind of blew my mind, really. It, it's, it's, I've had experiences where I've received the wrong record, sent it back without any issue, and in fact, sometimes received a record that I didn't order or two sometimes in the same package and return them never been an issue uh, and in some cases just been refunded when i have ordered and they didn't have the one i wanted when i went to get it replaced so it's never been an issue in that regard now the whole it's a whole other matter with the cost of vinyl presently averaging about 40 dollars canadian and many of the ones that i particularly want some old classic metal hard rock albums are in the 50 to 60 dollar range to be honest with you um canadian and that's that's gone way above my affordability um i don't have that much disposable income uh, for that type of for that that to just freely i don't have the wherewithal to freely buy records at, at that cost right so full disclosure I'm, I'm a fairly moderate you know collector i'm not serious into i'm not a complete is where I have to have everything. In, in fact, I guess if I could afford it, I probably would have everything of certain artists. I made a comment to a buddy, buddy of mine here on his um, on his vinyl community channel about certain records that I would never pay these exorbitant prices for and some going for $400. Um, I would never do that. But if I'm being honest, it's all relative, right, to what one can afford. So if if, you know, if I've got millions of dollars, I guess a $400 record, I would probably buy it, let's be honest. 
Um, but what I'm here about is there was a certain record I've been wanting for a while. Um, and it was the, the sixth studio album by Glenn Danzig, um, 666 Satan's Child, um, released in 1999. Um, and for the longest time, I think the only way you could get a lot of Danzig stuff uh, was bootleg um, or unofficial, however you want to categorize it. I know there is a difference and, and there's, there's those in the vinyl community that are much more knowledgeable about that than I will ever claim to be. And so uh, they could probably describe it for you better. I can't. Uh, a bootleg to me was always something that was just recorded on, you know, um, de uh, less than desirable equipment at a concert. You know, somebody had a tape recorder in their pocket and recorded the show. I've got a couple of old Sabbath albums from early on in uh, Ronnie James Dio's uh, uh, first uh, spin around was his Sabbath on the uh, Heaven and Hell tour. And I think I've got one later from the Mob Rules tour. Um but they sound pretty decent considering. Um, but that's always been my definition of what bootleg was. Uh, unofficial is typically, I, I guess, from my understanding, is that somebody's got a hold of um, a good digital source of that, typically digital, not always. And they're just reproducing it. They have a, a way of pressing the, the vinyl and then, you know, cutting it onto that, uh, that format and selling it. Um, and some would claim it was Glenn Denzig himself that was doing that in, in some of these cases, but I am not uh, an authority in that regard. So don't take my, my word. Uh, I don't have a stance on it. I have no idea. Um, but this particular album, I saw it on Amazon, um, dropped down to $19 Canadian. So that's probably 15 bucks US, I, I, I assume. I don't know the present exchange rate, but I think at that time it was around 15 bucks. Um, so I jumped on it and I ordered it. So what happened next was where it got a little stunning to me. Um, I just continually was getting an album that wasn't that album. So this is the album in question. Most of you who are Dan Zig or Misfits fan or Sam Hine uh, would know this record quite well. Um, I, I was a little late to the game with, with Dan Zig, his solo stuff. I knew of the Misfits many, many years ago. Uh, mostly due to Metallica and bands like that covering Misfits tunes. But I'd really wanted that. So I, I finally saw it for 20 bucks, as I mentioned. I ordered it. Um, and I, okay, just to sum this up, I went through this. I am very persistent. When I set my mind to something, I typically will do it. So I, or, I ended up doing this 15 times. Yes, 15 times. So, um they kept sending other records other than the one I was ordering. And in many cases, I would send it back. I'd get refunded or they'd send me, they'd try sending it again. And, 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 you know, I think after three or four times of that first go around, Amazon said, okay, wait, just don't reorder it. There's something wrong with that number in the system, evidently. And I've heard of other people having this issue um, in the vinyl community as well. So let me know in the comments below if, if you, if you were part of this whole hoopla of uh, trying to get this record, because I know others have. So I waited about a month. This all began, I should back up, I think October of uh, 2023. Um, so uh, I kept getting the wrong one. Now, back up to that first five that I had ordered and they said, whoa, wait. One of the records I did receive was this band called Prolapse. Now I presented this in my alphabet thread uh, under the letter P a while back. If you want to see that, I'll leave a link. Um, it's actually a really good album. I, 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 I told them, you know, look, I got the wrong album, whatever. So this is where it starts to get stunning for me. Maybe others have had this happen. And I know in, in one or two cases, I've had it happen, in fact, with Skid Row and something else, but I digress. So they said, okay, well, don't bother sending it back. Keep it. Um, and we will uh, send you another one. So I kept it. They sent me another one. It was still the wrong one. And it's on colored vinyl, I might add. It's pretty cool. Uh, good 90s punk, if I can say that, if there's such a thing. I, I dig it. It's really good. Anyway, um, so I sent it back. Um, and then they sent me what was supposed to be another Danzig. And it was wrong again. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Kept getting wrong. Finally, they just, as I said, they refunded me and said, just don't bother. There's a problem. So I waited, this was in October or so, I waited until towards the end of November and they were still listing, listing it on their site as available. So 
I thought, okay, well, if they're still listing it, I'm going to try it again. So I tried again. This time, this is what they sent me. Now, I'm not a fan. I mean, I'm not a, I wouldn't probably order, I would never order this. Let me just be straight. I wouldn't order this under my own, you know, I wouldn't see this and say, yeah, I'm going to get that. So, but anyway, this is what they sent. So I let them know, again, not the right one. This is what you sent me. The response was, and I'm always really, you know, clear with customer service. I don't mind sending it back. It's not a hassle to me, but this case, I think they were just really 10 out of 10. I got no complaints. Every time I spoke to them, it was like, we'll make it right. Keep that one. We'll send you another one. I said, yeah, okay, fine. I'll, I'll keep this one. Um, they sent me another one. Wrong one. I sent it back. And another one, wrong one. You're getting the picture. I did this, like I said, I did it 15 times. So this is about number seven or eight, and I, I'm still getting the wrong one. Um, so again, about the third time after sending it back, I get this. And all these times, each time I'm getting the wrong one. They're, they're, I'm, I'm just sending them back um, because I have no issue. Uh, it's only when I call them through customer service and they say, keep it. Keep it. We'll refund you, and uh, and maybe try reordering again at a different juncture, different time. So I wouldn't have bought this one either. Um, um, probably blow up your video would be the last ACDC album I would have purchased. Uh, I, I never really liked this one. It's it's I just not my ACDC that I prefer. Um, so, but whatever. You know, I said keep it. I kept it. Um, I haven't even listened to it yet, to be honest with you. This is going on four or five months ago now. Um, yeah, I've heard it. There's nothing new for me to hear on that. Anyway, this is not about that. So again, I waited a bit. Um, December, I tried again. I'm going to thought maybe around Christmas time, I'll try it because it was still there, 20 bucks. Again, I ordered it this time. Autograph. Now, this is a compilation. Uh, turn up the radio, the anthology of Autograph, and it's on blue vinyl. Um, I didn't, never even, I mean, I know of Autograph. I knew of that song. Um, Sign In, Please, I think was the album or something like that. Um, and I had a, good, a buddy who really dug these guys and that song particularly. Um, but not even that song is the, uh, is the one that I remember. It's a version of it. I don't know if it's a demo or or the original before they recorded it, uh, but it's, it doesn't sound the same at all, and it's okay. But anyway, again, I ended up keeping that one, and uh, they refunded me again. Uh, once they refunded me and everything was straight, I had the money back in my account. I placed another order, 1998, whatever it was, Canadian. Wrong album again. Now, this one I had never heard of. I don't even know what this is, but I looked it up in Discog, and it's a fairly valuable one, so great. I'm up. I'm already up in the game here. So because each time I'm only spending twenty bucks, and so this is Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, and I, I've looked into it. Like I say, it's from a video game. I haven't even opened the seal on it. There's no point. Um, I know it's not going to be my bag in my wheelhouse, but uh, heavyweight black vinyl. Um, they say that about a lot of these vinyl now, and. I forget who it was, whether it was Emerson from Emerson Lake and Palmer back in the day said all that weed vinyl stuff is complete bogus. Um, but again, I'm certainly no expert in it. Anyway, I digress. So another one I received in, in uh, error when ordering this one. And uh, um, called them again, said, no, still, still not getting it. And uh, you get the picture, keep it, we'll refund you, and uh, try again. So I did. I tried again. I thought, okay, I'm going to try again, like I say, and I'm persistent if nothing else. This time, it's Queen, Greatest Hits, Volume 2. Now, I do like Queen. And when I saw this, I thought, well, this is not a $20 record. This is a $50 or $60 record Canadian. Um, so I... Uh, I called them and said, you know, this is uh, about uh, 10 times unlucky. I just, there's something going on here. I'm not getting that record. And the customer service person I spoke to um, 
had no answers really. He said, look, it's, it's a good number. I mean, this, the number is in the system. It should be whatever reason somebody's pulling the wrong title and sending it. We don't know. Um, but we apologize for the inconvenience and like I say, great customer service, obviously. And, uh, so I'm up here, one, two, three, four, five, six albums. I would have not ordered probably. It just would have been out of my, my comfort of what, what I was willing to spend. The last time I ordered it in January, ta-da, it arrived. So I've been wanting to do this video for a while, as I alluded to, because uh, I wasn't sure I was ever going to get it. And then I saw another video, or at least somebody mentioned it on a stream or something, of them trying to get this um, and other titles as well, and Amazon continually sending them the wrong one. So that's my experience. Let me know what your experience is. I'm blown away by it, and I continue to, when I can afford it, to purchase albums through Amazon, and by and large, never an issue. I, I get some that are that are dog-eared and stuff. I've, I ordered a couple of, of Dio albums and stuff in, in recent recent months. Um, that I wanted to send out as VCLT. And so I went through that three or four times and kept getting getting a damaged one in varying degrees of damage. And I finally settled on it. I reached out to the person I wanted to send it to. And they said, look, man, you know, if it's got a little thing in the corner or whatever, they're cool with it. So I sent it. And uh, yeah, that's been my experience. By and large, it's been great. And obviously, that is stellar customer service. I've never heard tell of that. And I've not experienced it at any other retailer. And uh, I'm I'm kind of blown away by it. That's why I continue to shop there. Um, I don't get experience like that. And I've, I've gone to stores where I've got a record and, and got it home and there's damage. And it's really difficult sometimes for them to return it. Um, yes, they'll give you in-store credit, but I've had a, an experience where they didn't even want to take any responsibility for it all. It's like, well, you know, you opened it and like, come on, man, I'm not, uh, I'm not a scam artist here. That's, that's I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm on the up and up. Um, and I, I maintain that and expect the same from others. But anyway, I'm not getting on my horse about that. Just want to share my experience with Amazon specifically. And uh, a good experience in this case. Share your thoughts with me. Have you had experiences like this? Or maybe you've had bad experiences. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure some of you have. But I'm going to leave it at that because I'm hoping to do another video while the grandsons are at school. And I have to run out and pick them up in a little while. So uh, I'll leave it at that. As I alluded to, uh, I appreciate you all stopping in and checking out my channel. And I hope you stick around. And I hope to see you again soon here at Twanger's Turntable. Until then, take care. And uh, cheers, everybody.